It's so great to see you again. How are you? Oh, great, Mark. Thank you. Great to see you, too. As we chatted briefly before I turned the recording on, uh, it's been too long, but um, you've been involved in a lot of good things. I have. I have. It's been, a, uh, it's been kind of a wild uh, uh, several years since, uh, since you and I first, first met. Well, can you tell our, our business audience, probably a great way to start in this leadership series would be tell our business audience some, your full name, what you do, and just give us a little update. Sure. Uh, my name is Brian Altunian. I am the CEO and president of Wowio. Uh, Wowio is a, is a technology uh, media company. We have a significant uh, patent in the, in the uh, ebook distribution space. Uh, we're building out a new platform that's going to be disruptive uh, for that industry. Uh, you know, the publishing industry is going through a major overhaul, and we hope to be right in the middle of that mayhem. Um, I'm also the uh, CEO of Alliance Acquisitions, which is a small company that I formed to seed some early stage companies and try to, you know, mentor early stage companies uh, uh, looking to launch and looking for some help and support. So I, I do a little bit of a little bit of both. A little bit of both. A, little, a lot of everything. A lot, a lot of everything within those. No, that, that's fantastic. Um, well, let's let's get right to it. You know, a um, a question that's been asked a lot, and, and that's why we're especially. My business of executive search, you know, they're looking for the right fit candidates, and they're always asking me, "Well, what's a good leader? How do I, how do I determine what a good leader is?" So we've been asking executives like yourself, "What is your perspective or your definition, of, if you will, of leadership?" Well, I think that there are a lot of components that make up a good leader, and I, I think there's a there's kind of a, a key distinction here. There's what is a good, what is a good leader, and what does a good leader do? And I think that there. You know, there's two distinct uh, perspectives. I think that you know those um, characteristics that make up uh, make up good leaders that define what a good leader is. is you know, it's somebody who's uh, empathetic, somebody who has a who has a vision, somebody who can listen, process information, um, and you know, really kind of set out a, a vision that others can follow. Uh, I think that uh, they you know they have understanding of of you know, various cultures, um, but I think that the really successful leaders that I know and that I try to emulate my, my own uh, leadership out of is uh, a leader who's, who thinks about service, and I think that that's kind of a key component. I think if you have a leader willing, and, and there's a lot of books that have been written about servant, uh, servant leadership, but if you think about leadership as a service, what you're actually doing, whether it's a leader on a, on a sports team or a leader in a company, you know, you really are serving a, a greater good. You're either serving a need of a, of a consumer or your customer. Uh, you're serving a shareholder if you have uh, if you have a public company. Um, you you know you serve your your stakeholders, those that are invested either by their time or their money in your venture. Uh, and so, in in a way, you know, leaders who who can understand that they're in that mode, that they're in that role of of really being of service. I find it to be more successful because it's it's not a it's not really a self-serving uh, effort. It's not a self-serving endeavor, and I think that people engage in a role in that when there's a greater when there's a greater good to be uh, to be served. So I think that what you know what a strong leader does is is you know listen, observe, filter you know from their own experiences, and then and match the need to their own vision, and then set out. Uh, you know, sort of a mission to execute on that, and I think that that's what a good leader does. Uh, and I think that a good leader is a, you know can engage folks in that in their vision and their goal when they're able to relate. Um, again, listen, observe, uh, and goal, and and, uh, and and engage. You know, folks want to want to follow a leader like that. They see something of themselves in that. No, that, that, that that's a great description. You obviously work with a lot of uh, startups, entrepreneurs. Um, it's a special type of person to be a leader in, in that regard, and uh, it could be exciting, but it can also be tough. It could be survival mode. It could be scaling up mode. Um, give us a sense of the distinction between that type of leader and someone uh, that's in a larger business. Yeah, I think you know. I, I think that uh, it's, it definitely is a there definitely is a distinction there, Mark. I think that you know, for an entrepreneur, uh, first of all, I think a lot of people want to. Be entrepreneurs, and a lot of people have an idea of what they think an entrepreneur is. 
Um, and I think that you're right. Once they realize that they have to straddle the, the vision and the, you know, the larger picture with the reality of, you know, how do you cover payroll and how do you keep lights on? You know, you really test the mantle of true entrepreneur. Um, it's a lot easier to be, you know, to be in a large organization and to, you know, kind of create, um, you know, a broad stroke, if you will, on, 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 on sort of looking into the future because you have that safety and security of a large, of a large organization. Honestly, large organizations, in my opinion, they don't really support a lot of that entrepreneurial thought. You do find some. I would say that you do find some. Um, but it's, it, but the, the, the tendency of a large organization is really to, you know, to, you know, to follow a set path. It's like it's like it's like the difference between driving a speedboat and driving a, uh, you know, a cruise ship. Uh, the cruise ship is meant to go forward. It's kind of tough to stop at its momentum. You can't make sharp sharp turns. Entrepreneurs, you know, they're in speedboats. But by the way, if you drive too fast in speedboat, you know, you, you really you, you, you can get you can get in trouble as well. So I think that you know, entrepreneurs, entrepreneur, the leadership, uh, you know, the leadership uh, responsibilities of an entrepreneur is really all about having to to stick to the vision. You know, be willing to, to kind of fly in the face of no agreement. To be willing to fly in the face of you know a lot of no's and a lot of a lot of doors being slammed in your face. And you know, and, and forging a path to execution and delivery. And it's funny because I always say that you know, entrepreneurs. There's a fine line between you know being somebody who's a visionary and somebody who's just a social objector. <laughs> you know, you're faced with a lot of no's and a lot of you know, again, a lot of disagreement with your entrepreneur. So uh, yeah. you're willing to, to to fly through that and, and, and get through that and, to, and see your vision through. No, it makes total sense. You know, it's funny because um, I work with a lot of investors and, and private equity firms and. Um, I remember one especially, and I hear it then often, uh, one said that um, a lot of times they find that the people are celebrating that they've been funded, but they they really don't know that the tougher part of scaling is still to come. True? Yeah. No, it's it's totally true. You know, it's, I think it was a UPS commercial a long time ago when they all gathered around the screen to watch their first orders go through, and then all of a sudden, it would, you know, the ticker was moving so fast that it was like, hey, we have success, and they celebrated and it. Was, oh, my God, how do we fulfill? Right. Uh, yes. No. I think that that's. I think that that's a big. Uh, I think that that's a big issue. You know, it, it's funny because I remember being, you know, in a non-executive position and having a a, a, a funding uh, event, and then hearing the CEO sort of talk about how we were going to execute. You know, now that we have the funding, and honestly, it didn't really match with what our internal discussions had been in in the scaling efforts. So. You know, it's interesting. I have definitely seen where you know all of a sudden some sort of liquidation event or or, or some sort of funding event has is, is viewed as you know as as the end game. When the reality is, it's the be it's really the beginning. I like to say you know it's kind of like when you're pregnant. You know, you the pregnancy you you have the birth. That's your funding event. Everyone's like, yay, you have a baby. But you now have to raise that child, and that's where the scalability question comes in that you raise. It's sort of like. It's one thing to, to, to look for the impending birth, but it's another thing to raise that company, raise that job, and execute. And that's you know that's really where the scalability comes in. To, to no doubt, no doubt. Um, boards of directors, obviously, of a you know of an entrepreneurial startup growing company, they're also they're also unique, and and it can be very interesting. You know, with the vision of that entrepreneur leader and the board, you've worked with with. Again, these type of companies. What's the right type of person for a board? And um, and you know those type of positions, you know, aren't, aren't necessarily the right fit for everybody who's looking to get on a board. Yeah, it's a really good question. You know, I think boards are made up of, you know, often made up of, uh, you know, if you if you have a funding source, they like to have folks in the in board positions. And in a way, they they act as the uh, fiduciary, uh, you know fiduciary um, uh, oversight for that fund's money. I, I think that a board has to remember that it's not a select group of investors or a select group of stakeholders that they're responsible for. The makeup of the board is really responsible to all of the stakeholders. And I think, you know, where often you see a board, uh, a board and an entrepreneur have conflict is when, is when um, there's a disagreement about what the ultimate stakeholders' uh, goals are. The entrepreneur has their vision of you know what they believe and how they want to fund it and how they want to move things forward. And the board, you know, again, to some degree brings some sense of reality and again making sure that 
The vision is supported by an execution strategy that makes sense. And, and again, the, 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 there's, you always hear about conflicts on boards and, and you know, uh, board takeovers and, and whatnot. I think that's usually when the board and the entrepreneur have you know, divergent thoughts on, 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 on how to protect and uh, support the overall goals of the stakeholders. I think that the best, most best performing boards and management are when those efforts are aligned. And if, and if the entrepreneur, who generally in most cases is the largest shareholder, if you can realize that he's, again, going back to my, my service conversation, that when he serves all of his stakeholders and all of the shareholders, he tends to benefit the most just because of his position as a large shareholder. Um, that's, uh, that is often, I think, when entrepreneurs get into trouble, when they, when they lose sight of that. And again, I think that if, if you're looking at serving all of your shareholders, you know, to increase shareholder value, and the board and the uh, entrepreneur are aligned in that vision, you're going to have success. Anything short of that, and that's where conflict begins. Good stuff. Um, a little bit side, side of a question here that I think leaders are facing a lot. In fact, I had someone tell me recently, hey, it used to be that I could bring this person, that person into my office. We'd have a heart-to-heart -heart talk and get things worked out. Then he says, now if I bring him into the office, before the meeting's over, it seems to be on, the so on social media already, what happened in the meeting. <laughs> so you know it's hard. Hard to. Um, how do you see the impact of social media over over the ability of leaders to act and make decisions, etc.? You know, it's a, it's a really good question, and so I have a theory, and so I'm not sure if I'm right about this. So I'll I'll throw this out. Here's my here's my thought on it. Uh, uh, since you're asked, <laughs> I think I think if you're going to use social media, use social media. If you're gonna if you're gonna follow social media, you use social media. But if you're not gonna follow social media, then don't use social media. In, in other words, it's very transparent when a leader responds only because something has come up in social media, mm -hmm. right? If you're in the if you're in the habit of blogging and, and posting on, on you know various social media outlets, if you're in that habit, you're you're you're, you're interacting with the community. It's absolutely appropriate to be there. You know, and, and you you understand you know, sort of the nuances that come with this new social media environment that we're in. So you're not really as thrown by things that occur on social media when you're in when you're engaged. And so my perspective is if you're gonna if you're gonna if you're gonna find if you find yourself thrown by the by things that are brought up on social media, then 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 don't don't engage. And clearly you're not being engaged. Um, but but again if you use it then you, you continue to use it in in, in a way that actually Shows folks that you're first of all it helps to show that you're human, and shows folks that you are you know again you're stepping forward and, and, and standing for you know again a greater good a greater you know greater purpose. You know I'm I'm often I, I think social media is fantastic and horrible right as a parent. You know I have my own feelings about about social media with my children, but but it's it's it, the thing I love about it the most, Mark, is that it has transformed the way we think about business because we have instance feedback from our audience, even, even those that aren't our audience. Right. Um, we get that, 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 is, that is something that we've never really had before. And I think, again, if, it, if it's something that throws you or makes you make, consider a change, it's not the appropriate way to use social media. You be engaged or don't engage, but don't, don't go halfway in between. It's just, it, it, it's just impossible to, to manage. You just made me think of the, of the I, mean, I guess it's a quote that um, it's a lot easier to tell the truth all the time because then you don't have to remember what you told everybody. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I, I, love, you know, I love the good stories on social media. I love the feel good stories. Um, I love them because they touch me and, you know, I generally share them because I think that they're, you know, that they add something to, that they add something to somebody else's life the way that it, it, that it touched me. And so, you know, I don't like to engage in, you know, in combat on social media because that's just, that's not a, it's just not a no-win situation for anybody. Um, the thing about social media is everybody has an opinion and we now have an outlet for those opinions. And so, again, if you want to use it, use it consistently. Don't jump in only when it serves you or only when it's, when it's you know, when it's going against your, your path. You either go in or stay out. Yeah, people, people can tell authenticity or not at the end of the day. Totally. So, totally. Cool. Um, so, you know, with all the things you've been doing and going through and involved in, um, who's, who's someone that you could say has really been an influencer in your career and or your life? Well, I have a lot. Uh, <laughs> I have a lot. So I'll keep this. I'll keep. I'll, I'll, I'll keep it short. Obviously, you know, my family. 
um, has had a tremendous amount of influence. Both my parents were entrepreneurs, um, which is funny because I think that you either learn, either as a, as a, as a child, you either do exactly what your folks do, did or you go opposite of what your folks did. And so I've done both. Um, my folks are entrepreneurs, and so I immediately I, once I graduated school, you know, I went into corporate America, and now I'm an entrepreneur. So, you know, I don't think the alcohol is too far from, from the street. My, my folks were, you know, were, were very much into the customer service-oriented businesses. My mom was in real estate. My dad had a, had a grocery store, was in the, you know, so I grew up in a customer service environment. Um, and I have a lot of family members who were in that space. My older brother is an entrepreneur, has been very successful, and also you know, was at uh, uh, Dell and Motorola and some of the very, you know, uh, very well-established tech companies and then has started his own companies as well and now he's a professor. So I uh, hear yeah, a very big influence on, on me. I always, uh, I always bounce ideas off of him and he always shoots them down and gives me additional fortitude to, to keep fighting. Um, and then, you know, there, there are others. I've had, I've had teachers, I've had, I've had, um, you know, I've, I've had, uh, I would say, you know, there are certain authors who I love, who I love to read. Tom Peters, I think, is a phenomenal, uh, I, I love his perspective on, on the world of business. And uh, Michael Lewis, from a, you know, a little bit more of a, you know, fiction, slash fiction, you know, uh, treatment of historical uh, activity, which I love. Um, and so, you know, I, I, look at those, I look at folks who I'd always want to, you know, I want to, I want to be in business with or have, you know, or, or, or people I, I, I uh, admire. You know, I love Michael, how Michael Eisner had an impact on Disney and how he changed uh, Disney and, and, you know, his vision for that change. And I just think he was brilliant. I, I, I still think Michael Milken is a brilliant, you know, a brilliant man and somebody who I want to spend, you know, a dinner with one time just because, again, somebody who was willing to go against what was the norm at the time and create opportunity for so many people. So, those, those are, those are actually, actually, just took my, my next question. So if there's somebody from past or present infamous that you would love to have dinner with, you mentioned one, Michael, is there anybody unique that you, you would love to have dinner with, if you could? Um, I think just from a fascination perspective, I think I think I'd love to I'd love to have dinner with Steve Jobs. Uh, I just I mean, again, talk about somebody who just, you know, just outside the norm and, 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 and established a standard that's, you know, that we all now aspire to. I just, I think that there's brilliance there. Um, that would have been, you know, in his, his heyday, I think that would have been, a, that would be a fascinating dinner experience, I think. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, he, he's definitely interesting and he, he really knew what the type of customer service, he knew what the customer wanted, maybe even before the customer. Customer. I, I, I think you're right. I think he created something that really um, he thought was was cool and sleek and different enough that was going to attract attention and 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 he and he really stood for look he was polarizing I think for a lot but he stood for you know providing the best overall product and then and then a, a, a all you know a way of delivering content across all those product lines that has completely changed the way that we consume our our content today. No so. kidding. No kidding. Well, here, here's a the one word answers, which if you're like me, they can't be one word answers, but we'll try. Okay. Um, a little more personal, not too personal. Do you have a favorite sport? Uh, God, I, uh, I, love, I love all the main sports. I mean, I'm not a hockey fan. I'm born and raised in Los Angeles, so, you know, I grew up in the Dodgers, you know, with Dodgers. So, That's Dodgers, you know, baseball, football, uh, basketball, college. You know, I went to UCLA, so I'm um, a college basketball and football fan. So. Told you it couldn't be one word. No. <laughs> Um, well, at least we have the Stanley Cup champions two times in the last three That's years. That's right. That's right. Right. I, I can't. I can't. Yep. Yeah, I agree. That's fantastic. I love that. <laughs> do you love? Have, uh, you're kind of, You've been in the industry and around and whatnot. Do you have a favorite favorite movie or Broadway show or TV show or all the, the above? Well, I'm a. You know, I was a huge Seinfeld fan. Uh, I love Shawshank Redemption as a as a movie. Um, the, the, those are the, my, my two my two favorites. On my standbys. I love the show about. Uh, about um, um, pushing the show that that does, you know the show about nothing. To show about DC. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll give you I'll give you this just a little just for fun. I actually was in the very last episode of Seinfeld. I was on the jury as an extra. I was a, a friend of mine was uh, worked on the show, so uh, so I always had a strong love. Awesome. Yeah, I love it. So why it's it's endless. Um, do you have a um, favorite music you like to listen to? 
I know I, all of it. Anything that gets me going, anything that, and, it, and, and you know what? It fits my mood, so I'm, I, I don't have any particular type of that. I love it all. I'm with you. Is that the same thing with food? Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it's the same thing with food. Yeah. What? <laughs> um, well, that was, that was great. You're, uh, you're terrific to talk to. I really appreciate your time, and um, it's great to see you again, and uh, we will see you soon. Great. Thank you so much, Mark. Great to talk to you, too. My pleasure.